All right, guys, hi, welcome. I'm so excited to show you how to knit this super cozy shell collar cardigan. I love its construction. It's constructed a little bit uniquely, so make sure you follow along with the video if you have any questions. First thing you're gonna wanna do is download the pattern PDF that is free on my website, so click the link in the video description and um, down, enter your email in the pink box and get um, a, your free PDF of the pattern. The page will redirect right there. Um, so make sure you let the PDF fully load in the browser before you try to print it or save it. Um, all right, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on the cardigan. So reference the finished circumference, bust circumference of the sweater when figuring out what size to make. There are eight sizes listed. Just for reference, I am knitting a size three. I am about a 37 inch bust. The finished bust circumference includes the shawl collar, um, which kind of sits up a little bit higher. So it, it like the finished measurement may seem a little large. The sweater is supposed to be a bit oversized, but um, it's not, it, it can overlap a little bit. So, um, the finished bust size for a size three is like 45 and a half inches. Again, I'm a 37 inch, close to a 37 inch bust. So that is a lot of positive ease. Um, again, just pick a size that you think makes sense. And the circumference listed includes the, like includes the ease, just so you know. Okay, so we are gonna start by knitting the back of the collar. Um, and I'll show you how to do all of that, but everything is then folded over in the end. So it's constructed pretty uniquely. Um, it is a top-down raglan sweater, so you can increase the number of raglans that you would like to do, or you can decrease based on the size that you would like to make. There are, um, you're supposed to cast on a certain number of stitches at the underarm. You can adjust how many of those you would like as well. So top-down raglans are great because you can try them on as you go and see how they're fitting you. Um, so I hope you enjoy. Hi guys, I just wanted to quickly go over all the supplies you will need to knit this cardigan. All right, yarn. I use this Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick yarn. It is 223 yards, 204 meters per one skein. Um, you will need four to five skeins. Again, I do not test each size, so um, this is just an estimate. I used four skeins for my size three. This is the color silver. Okay, as far as needle size goes, you will need a pair of nine millimeter, everything is nine millimeters. So you'll need a pair of nine millimeter straight needles, nine millimeter 40 inch circular needles. You will need at least one nine millimeter double pointed needle to knit the shawl collar folded over. Um, and you will also need a pair of 16 inch nine millimeter circular needles to knit the sleeves. If you don't wanna use 16 inch circulars for the sleeves, you can use a full set of double pointed needles. You will also need some waist yarn to put the sleeve stitches on. You will need some scissors to cut the yarn. You can use a 10 millimeter crochet hook to do the optional edging on the ribbing if you would like. Um, you will need a tapestry needle to weave in ends and you will need a tape measure to measure the length of the arms, the body of the sweater, the ribbing of the sweater. And you'll need at least, um, you'll need six stitch markers. I have two uh, that are contrasting colors. So that denotes where the shawl portion of the cardigan ends and begins, the shawl color. All right, so let's get started. Every size will cast on 26 stitches. So make sure you have enough yarn for a long tail cast on for 26 stitches. And we are going to make a slip knot, which will count as our first stitch and we're gonna cast on 26 stitches. The slip stitch counts as our first stitch. So that's one, two, this is the long tail cast on method, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I have finished casting on my 26 stitches and this is the right side of the work. We're gonna turn the work to the wrong side and begin purling. We are doing a stockinette stitch. We're making stockinette stitch so we purl on the wrong side 
and we knit on the right side. And this is the back of the shawl collar. So we are going to make half of the shawl collar in this direction and then we're going to place the stitches. Um, we're going to leave the stitches on the needle and we are going to pick up stitches and work in the opposite direction. I know this sounds a little confusing, but just bear with me here as we get going. So we're going to continue stockinette stitch for a little bit. Okay, I'm just nearing the end of my first purl row. I'm going to complete the last stitch. I'm going to flip the work over. And now we are just going to knit on the right side of the work here. So we just continue knitting. All the way across. Okay, so I have knit to the point where I have enough length here to pick up half of the stitches I'm supposed to pick up for the raglan shaping. I'm knitting a size three, so I'm supposed to pick up 32, 32 stitches along the back. This is half of the length, so I need to make have enough length to pick up 16 stitches. So we will be picking up stitches and knitting the other direction for the other half. So this portion needs to be half of the stitches. The, it needs to be long enough to pick up half of those stitches. So again, I'm supposed to pick up 32 total and this is half so I need enough length to pick up 16 stitches and when we pick up stitches we pick up three stitches for every four rows so that means we can count one two skip a row three four five skip a row six seven eight skip a row nine 10, 11, skip a row 12, 13, 14, skip a row 15, and 16 there. It doesn't have to be exact because you can kind of, um, you know, fudge it at the end a little bit if you need to. You also need to make sure you end this half after you've completed a wrong side row. You're going to cut the yarn then because this is very important because you need to have the needle facing this direction because we will be picking up, um, we'll be knitting and picking up and then knitting. So we need the needle facing this direction. So you want to have um, the yarn cut after you've completed a wrong side row so that when you flip it over, the needle is facing this way. Now we're going to turn the work. We're going to take our 40 inch circular needle. We're going to take our yarn that we just cut and we're going to pick up 26 stitches along the bottom. So um, all you do is insert your needle and you are going to um, pick up stitches. Now I tend to pick up stitches by going over the needle. And this means that that very first row I knit or purl, I will be um, knitting or purling the opposite direction because my stitch is facing the, the wrong direction. Now when you pick up these stitches, you're simply going into the stitch through those two bars there. And um, you could, depending on what, you, what seems more natural to you, go under the stitch. And this way the stitch will be facing the correct direction. For some reason, I have just always picked up stitches um, going in the wrong direction. So that first row or round that I complete um, my work, I just need to make sure I um, have the stitch facing the right direction. So when I turn this, I'll be purling and I'll just be purling um, a little bit. That first row will just be a little bit different. I'll just be going into the stitch in the other direction. Again, to avoid this confusion, you can just go under and pull through. For some reason, I was taught or just learned to pick up stitches this way. It goes faster for me. Um, but just note that you want to make sure that your stitches aren't twisted when you complete your next row. So we're going to turn the work once we've got our stitches all picked up here, 26 stitches here. Um, let me get into that very last stitch there, pull up. So now you're going to want to make sure these stitches stay here. You're going to turn the work. And you're going to be going, you're going to just, if you've picked up stitches the way I've picked up, you're going to be going in the back loop. 
and purling that way so that stitch isn't twisted. If you were to go in the front, that st stitch would be twisted. So this very first row will just be a purl um, through that back loop there if you have picked up stitches the way I've picked up. So you're gonna now just complete stockinette stitch, purling on the wrong side, knitting on the right side, um, for the same length that you have made the first half, okay? So complete this first row, purling through the back loop if you've picked up the stitches the way I have, and then after this, it just knit and purl um, as you normally would. So you're gonna continue, I'll show you what it looks like on the right side because it's pretty cool. Um, And then when you get to the last few stitches, they might feel a little looser because that's where you've um, started. So you can just purl or tug on the yarn a little bit. Okay, so we've picked up our stitches and now we are going to, there's our original tail. Just make sure you're working with the correct piece of yarn. Now you're just gonna knit and it almost looks invisible that we're now going in the other direction. So the point of this is to allow us to create this really cool collar where we knit, pick up stitches, and knit, and then everything will be connected. Um, okay, so continue stockinette stitch for the same length going the other direction, and then you need to make sure you have enough length to pick up all of the stitches you're supposed to pick up. So I'm supposed to pick up 32 stitches. You will also want to end after you've completed a wrong side row so that the yarn is here and you're able to start on the right side when it's time to pick up stitches. So I'll see you back here in a little bit when I'm ready to do that. Okay, so I just completed um, the back of the collar and I ended after a wrong side row over here. I've already got my stitches on an extra needle um, that I put on after completing a wrong side row and I've cut that yarn. So I have my work on a long circular needle over here. And what I'm gonna start doing is knit these stitches then pick up the stitches along, pick up stitches along the back of the collar, two stitches, I'm sorry, three stitches for every four rows, and then I will knit these stitches. And then we will be ready to go for the yoke of the sweater. So just to remind you, um, depending on what size you're making, I'm picking up 32 stitches along the collar here. And basically it's, it's one stitch for the front, for the left front and the right front. It's six stitches for each sleeve and then 18 stitches along the back. So I've made sure I, I have my work long enough to pick up three stitches for every four rows going um, perpendicularly. So it's one, two, skip a stitch, three, four, five, skip a stitch, six, seven, eight, skip a stitch, nine, 10, 11, skip a stitch, 12, 13, 14, skip a stitch, 15, 16, 17, skip a stitch, 18, 19, 20, skip a stitch, 21, 21, 22, skip a stitch, 23. Now I feel like I'm off. <laughs> But you get the idea, um, and you just want to continue to make sure you have enough length to pick up the 32 stitches or however many stitches you're going to pick up, okay? So um, it doesn't need to be, like, exact. If you have an extra row or two, um, don't worry. So basically, I'm just going to show you now how we're going to pick up all the stitches for the yoke and place stitch markers. So I'm gonna make sure I have all of my stitch markers handy. And we will place them as we go. 
All right, so I've got my stitch markers handy, and now we're gonna start knitting and picking up stitches and setting up for our raglan shaping. So basically, when you knit this collar, um, you work it perpendicularly for the back for all the cast on stitches, and then you work um, the collar all together. So I'm just gonna start knitting here. And we're gonna work all the way across this first row. Okay, so I am nearing the end here of this first side. And now I'm simply just going to continue. I'm gonna drop my left needle and I am going to continue picking up stitches here with this yarn. So I'm going to insert my needle in this first space and pull up this stitch. So that's one, easier said than done. <laughs> Try that again. Okay, so I'm going to pull up a stitch that's one. And then I'm going to insert the needle all along this top part of the work and doing one stitch, second stitch, skipping a space, and then inserting my needle and picking up a stitch here. So basically, we're going to start curving the work around to this part of the of the collar. So I've picked up three stitches and the reason we're skipping is because when you knit perpendicularly to your work, um, if I did a stitch for every row here, the work would gather too much. So this allows it to lay a little bit flatter. So we are doing three stitches for every four rows. So that was three stitches. This is four, five, skip a stitch, six, seven, eight, skip a stitch, nine. So we are picking up and knitting along this side. That was nine, 10, 11, skip a stitch, 12. 13, 14, skip a stitch, 15. 16, 17, skip a stitch, 18. 19, 20, skip a stitch, 21. Twenty two, twenty three, skip a stitch, twenty four. Twenty five. Oops. That was twenty five. 26, skip a stitch, 27, 28, 29, skip a stitch, 30, stitch I keep dropping that um, and now I have two more stitches to make here and I'm just gonna try to kind of spread them out evenly across the work that I have left just to try to make it look even okay so now we are at the end 
of that collar part, the back collar. So now I've got stitches this way and across here. And now I'm simply going to knit all of the stitches off of this needle that's sitting here. Remember, you have this tail. We can weave that in later. But so now we're simply just going to knit. And if you need to tug that piece of yarn to get that first stitch tight when you start knitting off of this needle, go ahead and do that. And so now we're simply going to just knit to the end. I know I mentioned the stitch markers. We'll place those as we, when we turn the work and come back. All right, so I'm just going to knit to the end here. All right, so now we have connected all of our stitches and we're just going to do a raglan setup row to work so we can work our yoke. So when we cast it on for the collar, we had 26 stitches. So first, um, I want you to purl 26 stitches and then place a stitch marker just so you know where the end of the collar is. So that's one, two, three, four, five. All right, so I've purled across 26 stitches. I'm going to place a stitch marker. I am going to purl one stitch. This will become the left front. Place another stitch marker. Okay, then I'm going to purl across six stitches. This is our sleeve. And one thing I wanted to note, as you can see, when you pick up stitches, the way I pick up stitches, um, I need to go and purl into the stitch kind of backwards on my way back. Okay, just the way I pick up stitches, I have to insert the needle this way on the hook or on the needle. Um, so the stitches aren't twisted. Normally when I purl, I would purl like this, but if I did that, the stitch would be twisted. So just for this very first round or row, I need to go into the stitch kind of backwards um, because the way I pick up stitches, my stitches kind of face um, the other direction. So overall, you'll need six stitch markers. I'm gonna place another stitch marker here to mark um, a sleeve and now I'm going to purl across 18 stitches again. Just these are kind of backwards. I'm going in from the back of the stitch to the front here so the stitch isn't twisted. All right, so um, purl across 18 stitches and then we're gonna place another stitch marker. Or purl across the amount of stitches that you need for your size. I'm just showing you overall how to do this. Okay, so I've purled across 18 stitches for the back there. I'm gonna place another stitch marker now I'm going to purl across six stitches for the other sleeve. All right, I'm going to place the stitch marker. I am going to purl one stitch. This is for the other front. And then I'm going to place my last stitch marker and purl across these, the front collar stitches. Now these aren't backwards. These last stitches aren't backwards because I purl, I did not pick up and knit these stitches. These were part of the original collar that um, I continued knitting across. So this, this last section shouldn't be twisted here. So now I'm just purling to the end. Okay, I'm finishing up this row. Okay, so I just wanted to show you what everything is looking like now. So um, we are now ready to do our raglan increase rows around these stitch markers. This first section represents that front collar um, and we will always just, this will, there will be no 
um, increases before this first stitch marker. This is just to help us to know what that collar is. All we do is stack a net around that. This first, this first purple marker over here and this yellow marker over here, now there's one stitch in between each of these. Um, we are going to increase four stitches every, I'm sorry, eight stitches, um, every raglan increase row. We are going to increase two stitches around this marker, two stitches around this marker, two stitches around this marker, and two stitches around this marker. This section that's now one stitch will grow, it will grow to be the right front, meaning the front that sits on your right shoulder. Okay, this section will grow to become the right sleeve. This section will grow to become the back. This section will grow to become the left sleeve. And this section will grow to become the left front. We will be folding this collar over and seaming it so we get this nice thick collar. Um, and so these stitches will be folded in half. I know it can be hard to visualize this, but as this starts to grow, you'll be able to see it start coming together. But just know we will be folding this collar together. All right, so I am going to show you how to do your first raglan increase row. So first thing we do is just knit to that first stitch marker. All right, so I've knit to that first st stitch marker that denotes the collar part. All I'm gonna do is slip this marker. And then now I am going to make, make one right. Okay, and it's a little hard because this is um, right where we have just started picking up stitches from the previous row. So this first round might be a little tricky, but all you're gonna do is insert the needle from back to front. Um, in the, the, Again, this first round will look a little different here, um, but you insert the needle into the bar in between the stitches from back to front, and then you knit into that first stitch. Okay, then you knit the next stitch slip the marker, knit the next stitch. Now you're going to make one that leans to the left. And to make one that leans to the left, you insert the needle from front to back and insert, th and, and insert your needle, and then you just knit it through the back there. And then you just knit to the next stitch marker. Again, this first raglan increase row looks just a little different because we've just picked up these stitches. So then we will just knit to one stitch before the next marker. And we will insert the needle. We're gonna make one that leans to the right. We're to the right of the needle. We're gonna make a stitch that leans to the right. You insert the needle from back to front and knit it through the front. And then you knit the stitch, slip the marker, knit a stitch, Insert, we're gonna make one left now, one that leans to the left or to the left of the marker, insert the needle from front to back and knit through the back. And then you knit across to one stitch before the next stitch marker. Okay, so I have knit across the back. Now I am at one stitch before the next marker, which is for the left sleeve. And I need to make one that leans to the right or to the right of the marker. And so we insert the needle from back to front and knit through the front. And then we knit one, slip the marker, knit one, make one that leans to the left or to the left of the marker, insert the needle from the front to the back, knit it through the back, knit across the left sleeve stitches to one stitch before the next marker, stop, make one right, insert the needle from back to the front, knit it through the front, knit one, slip the marker, knit one, insert the needle from front to back, 
knit it through the back and then we slip that next marker and then just knit to the end. So basically I just want to explain with the make one um, with the make one left and the make one right um, or make one right <laughs> make one left basically you're gonna get the stitches to slant out um, in that direction on either side of the marker it ends up looking really cool um, but just remember you make one right to the right of the stitch marker you make one left to the left of the stitch marker and I just remember for some reason when I make one right I insert from back to front make one left insert front to back um, and then um, you will finish your raglan increase row and then um, we are just going to purl back across all of the stitches. So I'll meet you back here when we've finished this round. All right, I'm finishing this round and just wanted to pause and show you that we have increased. So now we have two stitches for um, the left front. We should have eight stitches for each sleeve. We should have 20 stitches across the back, eight stitches for the right sleeve, and two stitches for the right front. So we increased one stitch here, two stitches for, each, for the sleeve, two stitches across the back here, and we've increased two stitches for this sleeve, and one stitch for the front. So now all you're going to do is purl back across this entire row and then we'll do another raglan increase round so we'll alternate. When we are on the right side of the work we will do a raglan increase row. When we are on the wrong side of the work we're simply going to purl all the way across slipping the stitch markers as we go. So we're just going to continue doing that until we get to um, the amount of stitches that we're supposed to have based on how wide we want the back to be. So, um, you know, I've written out a pattern, but you can basically continue until your back stitches get to be as wide as you think you need. Um, and I'll show you how to figure all that out. But in the meantime, just keep purling all the way across this row. Okay, so I just finished that purl row, I flipped the work back over, and now I'm going to do another raglan increase row. And I just wanted to show you one more time how to do the raglan increase row now that we are past the um, that initial row because that looked a little different because we had just picked up stitches. Um, so I'm going to knit. This is that front call, those are the front collar stitches. I'm gonna slip the needle. I'm gonna knit one, basically just knit up to one stitch before the marker and I need to make one right now that leans to the right. We are to the right of the stitch marker. So you insert from back to the front and knit through the front. Basically, the way to remember, if you insert back to front, you have to knit through the front or else that stitch won't be twisted. You knit one slip the marker, knit one, and now we're going to make one left. And when you make one left, you always insert from front to back and you knit through the back to get that stitch twisted. That stitch just has to be twisted. And then we're going to knit across the sleeve stitches to one stitch before the next stitch marker. You insert from back to front, knit it through the front, knit one, Slip the marker, knit one. Now we're going to make one that leans to the left. Insert from front to back, knit through the back. Now you're going to knit all the way across the back stitches to the next stitch marker. All right, so I've knit to one stitch before the next stitch marker. Insert the needle from back to the front to make one right. 
and then knit the stitch, slip the marker, knit one, make one left, insert the needle front to back, knit through the back, knit across the sleeve to one stitch before the next stitch marker. And then we are going to make one right, insert the needle from back to the front, knit through the front, knit one, slip the marker, knit one, insert front to back, knit through the back, and then knit to the next stitch marker, and then this is just our right collar stitches, so I'm just gonna slip that marker and knit to the end. Just knit to the end, and then you flip the work, and you just purl all the way back across. And you just slip the markers along the way. All right, so I just wanted to show you what everything is looking like now after we've completed two raglan increase rows um, and I've just finished with a purl row. So basically you can start to see the increases, one raglan increase, two raglan increases. You see these little notches and the new stitch coming out. So one, two raglan increases. So I am gonna continue. I started with 18 stitches for the back. I'm gonna continue until I have 48 stitches for my back. So if I started with 18 and I need to get to 48, that's 30 additional stitches and I increase for each row twice, two stitches on the back here, one on this side and one on this side. So that's 15 raglan increase rows total that I need to complete to get to 30 more stitches or 48 stitches for the back. So depending on how wide or whatever size you're making the sweater, that's just kind of the big picture and how to keep track of, you know, how many increase rows you need to make um, and that kind of thing. All right. So I will touch base with you in a little bit once I complete a few more raglan increase um, rows just so you can see what the work is looking like. One thing I just wanted to remind you of, we've got these six stitch markers on. Just remember to only make raglan increases around the four that are in the center. These outside stitch markers are just simply noting the collar stitches that we will be folding in half. So just make sure you're not doing raglan increase stitches around these first markers these markers that are on the outside of the work. We're just doing raglan increase stitches around these four, one, two, three, four stitch markers um, that separate out the front, the sleeves, the back, and the back, okay? So just make sure you're not doing raglan increases on these first, around these first two stitch markers just the ones in the middle, one, two, three, four. So you have eight increases, eight stitches you've increased every raglan increase row. All right, I just wanted to take a second and show you what the sweater is looking like after completing um, a few more raglan increase rows. I've completed 10 and I just wanted to show you kind of how to count and keep track. Um, you can kind of count the little notches where you have increased. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 there. So I've completed 10 raglan increase rows. And if I started with 18 stitches and I've done 10 raglan increases, 10, 18 stitches for the back here, and I've done 10 raglan increase rows, I've increased 20 stitches. So I should have 38 stitches here. And um, for the sleeves, um, you just add 20 stitches as well to your original sleeve count. So I'm gonna continue until I have 15 raglan increase rows. So that would be um, 
10 more stitches. I will have 10 more stitches on my back. So that's 48 stitches. So just wanted to show you there's a lot of stitches on the needle. So you might need to switch to a really long circular needle, but um, to spread the stitches out. But there you go. So I will meet you back here once I've completed 15 raglan increase rows and I've completed a purl side. So um, we're going to stop and divide for the body after we've finished a wrong side row. I just wanted to show you what to do when you are nearing the end of your first skein of yarn um, and you need to join your next skein. So basically you're going to leave a little length at the end and hold the two strands together and you will be either knitting or purling double just for a few stitches. I'm going to do about four stitches here and then you're going to want to drop that uh, original the yarn from the original skein and you'll just continue working now one thing i wanted to note is that when you come back and work the double stitches you need to work them as one stitch so even though i have two strands of yarn here you will work these as if they were one stitch and then you'll just be able to trim these pieces um, so basically that just allows you to connect the yarn without using a knot. It's just kind of a more seamless way to join your yarn. Okay, so now it is time to, to divide for the body. You will have a ton of stitches on your needles right now. You have so many stitches because you have this double collar, this folded collar already attached. You've got your front, your left front, you've got your left sleeve, you've got the back, um, and then you have the right sleeve, the right front, and then the right collar. So it is a ton of stitches. So I have knit until I have 48 stitches on the back. So again, that is 15 raglan increase rows. So I have increased 30 stitches. So I've gone from 18 stitches on the back all the way to 48 stitches on the back. I started with six stitches for each sleeve plus 30 stitches is 36 stitches for the sleeve. I started with one stitch for the left and right front and now I have 16 stitches for the front and then our um, front stitches for the collar have remained the same. So now we are going to knit across the work to the point where we get to our first sleeve. We're going to remove these sleeve stitches and put them on some waist yarn so we can come back later and knit those. And when we take those off, we connect the front and the back. We knit across the back, we remove the next sleeve stitches, we connect the back to the other front, and then knit the front. So that is what happens when you divide for the body. You're basically knitting across the work, removing the sleeve stitches so that the front and the back stitches are all connected to so you just have your body stitches so i am going to show you how to divide for the body again knit to your desired width of your back stitches and then um, we will divide for the body so you're going to knit across to your first sleeve okay so i'm going to get started and then i will meet you once i get to the first sleeve so i am going to go past that first stitch marker which just denotes that front um, collar portion of the work so knit past that to your first sleeve stitch marker in which in my case it's this purple stitch marker so i will see you then All right, i am at the point where i am just um and just up to that first sleeve stitch marker. You will not do an, a raglan increase on this round. So you are done with your raglan increases. So you are just knitting up until that first stitch marker. Um, and then what we're gonna do is remove this stitch marker and you're gonna take your tapestry needle and a piece of waist yarn. And you need to make sure the piece of waist yarn is long enough to hold all of the stitches comfortably and has some tail on both ends. 
So um, you're going to take your tapestry needle and slowly start removing all of those stitches, all of those left sleeve stitches. And that's all the way to this next marker. So that marks the end of the sleeve stitches. So you're just going to carefully place all of these stitches onto this piece of scrap yarn here. And then we're going to cast on for underarm stitches. When you knit raglan sweaters, top down raglan sweaters like this, you typically cast on stitches to give a little bit of room at the underarm. So I am going to cast on four stitches at the underarm. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'm just getting all of these stitches all the way to the next stitch marker on this piece of scrap yarn. Now I'm going to remove this stitch marker and I'm just going to slide the waste yarn through all of these stitches, remove the needle, and so I've got a little bit of a tail on both ends so all of my sleeve stitches now are off of my work and you can fold your sleeve stitches and bring your needles together. And there you can see there's your sleeve right there. So now we're gonna connect the front and the back by casting on stitches using the backwards loop method where you simply twist the work and put the loop on the needle. So that's one, two, three, Four. And the reason you do a backwards loop is so that you can knit into the work and you've got a twist in the work. Okay, so now you're simply going to knit the back stitches. And these stitches might be a little wonky and they might feel a little loose. It'll, it'll all work out, believe me. Um, and we can always go back and seam the armhole gaps. Um, so you're going to knit all the way across the back to the next sleeve, and then we're going to remove all of those stitches on that sleeve. So I will see you back here when we hit the next stitch marker. All right, so now I am at the next sleeve stitch marker. I'm knit across the back, and so I'm going to knit up to the stitch marker, remove the stitch marker, take my tapestry needle and my waist yarn, and get ready to move all of those sleeve stitches to a piece of waste yarn by simply sliding the stitches off the needle onto the piece of waste yarn and you put all of these sleeve stitches, which are all of the stitches, up into the next stitch marker. All right, so I'm almost at the end here. I'm going to slide off that other sleeve stitch marker, I'm gonna pull all of my stitches through here, making sure I have my tail free on the other end, and voila, all of my sleeve stitches are on this piece of waste yarn, so I'm going to connect the front and the back, fold the work here, and I'm going to do those four underarm cast-on stitches using the backwards loop method, and all it is is a backwards loop, and then I'm going to start knitting that last section, so this is the front and then that collar portion, and I am just going to knit all the way to the end. Um, so when you turn the work, I did want to show you what it looks like to work those underarm cast on stitches because those are a little difficult to work. But first I wanted to turn this and just kind of show you what the work is looking like at this point now that we have connected the fronts and the backs. So basically our sleeves are off of the needle and the sweater now looks a little bit more like a sweater. I know it's really bulky here and you've got a lot of work, so we will be folding this collar in half and seaming this and it, it will make a really cool thick collar um, eventually. But 
this is what the work is looking like now. So you turn the work and you just continue purling, continue the stuck and that stitch and I'll show you what it looks like to work those stitches at the underarm cast on because those are a little different. All right, so I'm almost at those underarm cast on stitches and it can be a little difficult to work the first row or two of those underarm cast on stitches. And you want to be careful because it can be easy to drop these stitches, but basically you just need to make sure you're going into the stitch carefully and slipping it off so you don't drop those cast on stitches. So that's the second stitch. And these stitches will be a little looser um, initially. And then if you need to go back and seam the underarm, you can go back and do that. And then where it connects to the rest of the body will be a little bit loose. You can see that there is a lot of room there and you just simply keep purling across. So um, it looks, it'll look a little different on the other side, but um, that's kind of what it looks. So now it should be easier to knit across those. And then if we need to seam up any gaps later, when we do this, after we do the sleeves and we're finishing up the sweater, we can do that. So again, just um, keep purling all the way across and then just do that same thing for when you get to the other underarm cast on stitches for the other sleeve. So I am gonna continue the stuck and that stitch for a while here. Um, and what's nice about this cardigan is that you can try it on as you go and you can kind of figure out um, the length that you would like to knit it to. So I will meet you back here when I think I'm at my desired length. I okay, I wanted to take a second to show you what the cardigan is looking like now. Um, I am at the point where I am ready to um, knit the bottom ribbing. So um, you finish the body to the length that you are supposed to or the length that you would like to from the underarm cast on. And for me, that is approximately Eighteen inches, I would say, prop nineteen inches. Okay, so I knit about nineteen inches from the underarm cast on, and then I'm going to complete ten rows of ribbing um, for the bottom of the sweater. Feel free to make the body longer or shorter, make the bottom ribbing longer or shorter, um, but. When we are ready to do the ribbing, you need to end after a right side row so you are ready to purl on the wrong side row. And this part is a tad tricky because we are going to be folding over this, the collar part, the shawl collar part. And then, um, as you know, we put the stitch marker on so that we know, um, where the shawl collar um, ends. So what's gonna happen is we need to fold this over and work ribbing across half of the stitches. So once you get to your desired length and you have finished a right side row, you will be starting um, this, I'm calling this the ribbing setup row because we're setting up for our ribbing, but first we need to get our stitches seamed together. So what you're going to do is I'm going to have you purl all the way across past this first marker, um, and to the point where you get to this, the second stitch marker. Okay. So we're going to start folding over on this side first. So just purl all the way across. Okay, so I am almost at the point where I am to my second stitch marker. I've purled all the way across to the second stitch marker, which marks the beginning of that shawl collar, which we will be folding over. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip this marker and we're gonna purl across half of these stitches. So I have 26 stitches here, so I'm gonna purl across 13 stitches. Okay, so I should have 13 stitches left, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, which I do. All right, now we are going to move the rest of these stitches to a double pointed needle um, of the same size. 
If yours is a little bit smaller, that's fine. Just make sure it's not bigger because you just don't want the yarn to stretch. So slip all of these stitches off onto a double pointed needle to hold the work. All right, so make sure those stitches are on there securely. Now, we are gonna turn the work to the right side. And this is basically like we are starting a new row here on the right side of the work. We've got um, our, our yarn here. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to connect the front and the back by knitting these stitches together. And I will show you how to do that. So you take your needle from the other side that your stitches are on and Okay, so I have everything set up. So now what you're gonna do, you're gonna move the yarn to the back here and we're gonna slip stitches off the front and the back and knit these two, two together. So we're gonna do a slip, slip, knit. Slip from the front, slip from the back, and then knit these two together using that double pointed needle. So slip, slip, knit. Slip, slip, knit. Slip, slip, knit. All right. Slip, slip, knit. Slip, slip, knit. And so you should always have the same amount of stitches to the stitch marker. We've got six left on the back and six left till we hit this marker, denoting um, the end of the shell collar. So you just keep doing this slip, slip, knit, connecting the front and the back. And then once you are done, you will just knit across to the next stitch marker. And then we will do something similar on the same side to get that folded over shawl collar look. Now see, look, I'm dropping stitches. Be careful as you get towards the end. All right, here's the last slip slip knit. All right, so now I can drop that double pointed needle. We'll be using that again. But now if you look, we have fold created that fold over collar look now. So now just simply knit across on the right side of the work till you get to this next, next stitch marker and then I'll show you what to do. Okay, so I have knit across to the next stitch marker. So we need to now fold over this part and knit the front and the back together. However, what's tricky is we have um, a circular needle, so I can't remove the stitches onto the double pointed needle here because I can't slip them off. So what we need to do is slip the first 13 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, or however many stitches equal half of your shawl collar. Now we need to remove the second half and put these onto this double pointed needle so we can knit the front and the back shawl collar together. So just slide all these off. And then, unfortunately, we're going to have to slip all of those stitches, those, the first half, we're going to have to slip back onto the circular needle so we can knit this all together. So now, take your circular needle and put all of these stitches back on here. 
So we should have 13 or half the stitches on your double pointed needle and half the stitches left on your circular needle. Okay, so we're gonna do what we did to the other side, but we're just at the end of the row instead of the beginning of the row. Okay, so our yarn is still here at the beginning, which is good. So now we're just going to do that same slip slip knit. Slip from the front, slip from the back, and knit those two stitches together. And I use, I use the double pointed needle to do the knit, knitting the stitches together, there, or whatever needle is in the back. Slip, slip, knit, 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 and just be careful when you get to the end that you're not dropping stitches. Always take from the front needle first, then the back needle. I've got, uh-oh, I dropped a stitch here at the end. Aha, be careful. So I should still have three on the front and three in the back. All right. Slip, slip, knit. Slip, slip, knit, slip, ah, it's hard to do, slip, knit. Okay, so we've got our shawl collar folded over on both ends. So now we are just going to work a rib stitch normally here. And you can slip these markers off now. You don't have to keep them on. So to do the rib, we're going to slip one purlwise, purl one, and then do a knit one, purl one. Knit one, purl one. Knit one, purl one. And so repeat, do the Slip one, purl wise, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. And you're just gonna continue the knit one, purl one until you have two stitches left and then I'll show you what to do. Okay, so you're gonna continue the ribbing until you have two stitches left. And then now we're just gonna do a knit, knit. Turn the work and you're gonna repeat it. So you slip one purl wise Purl one, knit one, purl one. So that's how you complete the ribbing. So I will see you back here um, after I have um, completed about nine rows or so. Um, I'll, I'm gonna kind of check back and see what the length is looking like that I designed on the fly here. So um, I'll check back in with you when it's time to bind off and tell you how long I've gone. All right, so now I've completed the length of the bottom ribbing. I ended up doing the ribbing for about three and a half inches here, almost four inches. So uh, make sure you end after a wrong side row so you're ready to bind off on the right side. I'm gonna show you a basic bind off. There are many different ways to bind off. You could do a stretchy bind off, Italian bind off, tubular bind off. I just am gonna show you how to do a basic bind off here um, and then um, we'll get going. So our first two stitches were purl stitches. So we're gonna bind off in the one by one ribbing, but we're gonna follow our, um, our pattern. So we started off by purling two. So we will purl two, and then we're simply going to um, drop that first stitch over the stitch we just knit. 
So in the end, you'll always have one stitch on the right hand side. So the next stitch is a knit stitch. So we will knit that stitch and then just slip that first stitch over that second stitch and do your best to bind off, you know, a little loose here. Um, but the goal is just to keep the tension consistent all the way across. So you just keep um, binding off in the established pattern, which is one by one rib and you'll work all the way across. So I will come back and show you what to do when you're nearing the end. Um, but this is what it starts to look like with this basic bind off here. So I'll see you back here when I'm nearing the end of the bind off. Okay, so I've got two stitches left. My last two stitches are knit stitches. So I'll just continue binding off in the pattern. And then when you have one stitch left, you simply just take your scissors, cut a tail, and you just pull the yarn through. And then we can just weave that end back in at the end when we weave in all our ends. So we've just completed the bottom ribbing. Okay, now we're probably at what I would call one of the more difficult parts of the pattern. So we've completed the body, we've done the bottom ribbing, we have yet to work the arms, but now's the time I suggest seaming the folded over collar. So we folded it over on the bottom, but now we need to seam this inner collar um, to the body all of the way around the work. So we're gonna, fold, we're gonna fold it, and I would suggest if you want to take stitch markers and kind of pin it, but basically we're gonna start on one side and we are gonna seam all the way up following the same line and working all the way up seaming all the way around. You might want to pin the top where you started to the bottom here so that lines up and we're literally going to just seam all of the way around. All right, I have um, a piece of yarn that's the same yarn that I knit with threaded through my tapestry needle. This is pretty long. Go as long as you can, you know, kind of stand it. You're going to have to sit and pull it through. You will have to use more than one piece just because we're seaming so much. Um, okay, so we're, I'm going to start on the bottom right um, and work my way up. So this is the right front of the sweater. So I'm going to start on the inside of the right front. So basically, um, I am going to work in the bars of... I'm going to pretend like I'm seaming a mattress. I'm going to, that I'm seaming as if they were two separate pieces. So um, when you do that, you work in between the two bars um, after that first stitch. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up, leaving a tail that I will have to weave in later. And then I'm going to line it up with the bars that are right here. Okay, so I will be working, you're gonna wanna make sure that that's, you know, really close to, this is the back of the work that's very close to where we seamed it. Okay, so we go up those two bars. And like I said, um, you know, you'll just leave a tail and weave that in later. So. Now we're going to come back on this side and go through the two bars. So we came up over here. Now I'm going to just go up these two bars on this side of the work. So just be sure you continue to work in the same stitches all the way up. So see, I had just gone through that, that stitch there. 
Um, so now I'm gonna go, I'm making sure I'm in the same stitch row here, going up the side. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna come back to this side. And I just came out of this one over here. So I'm gonna go up the next two bars on that side. All right. So I came up right here on the wrong side of the work. So I'm gonna go through the next two up here. So we're slowly just attaching, and if you look on this side, you won't really see where we're, see where we're seaming. So the goal is to make sure that it's kind of invisible on the right side of the work. So you're just gonna continue up along this right front, seaming the work, going through two bars on either side. So I will meet you back here when we get to the point where we are at the top of the work where the right front hits that first part of the shoulder of the sleeve. So our sleeve is right here on the right side. So seam up into the point where we are right here, basically where you, this is like our original um, back of the collar that we knit. So seam it up until we get here and then we'll touch base and make sure everything lines up and then we'll just seam it a little differently through um, this top. And then you'll keep going and you'll work this side just as we did this side but you'll just be coming from the top down instead of the bottom up. All right so I will meet you back here when we get to the top collar here where the right front meets the uh, first part of the sleeve. One thing I wanted to note, it can be really hard to keep track of that same stitch that you're going into as you go up. You could take a piece of contrasting yarn, weave it through the tapestry needle, and just go up with that tapestry needle all the way up through through the same stitch like this and pull it through just to keep track of where you are. So I just wanted to note that. So that's one thing you could do to keep track of, um, of that stitch that you're in. Okay, I just wanted to show you what it looks like to weave through a piece of contrasting yarn. And so then when you continue to work, um, so basically you just follow that stitch um, all the way up with a piece of contrasting yarn and when you work the stitch, you'll just go through that same side where the stitch is. So I just came out over here, and now I know I go through that stitch right there to continue. So I um, just wanted to show you what that looks like. That'll just help you keep track of the row, making sure you're in. And then, you know, once I get up here, I can rethread this and continue up and, and pull this through as I've worked. So... Um, I just wanted to show you what it looks like to do that. That'll just help you make sure you're seaming this in a straight line as you go. Okay, so I have finished seaming up that right front all the way to where that right front meets that sleeve, and I've stopped right here. Now, I'm changing my mind when I'm telling you what to do. I am going to have you seam up I'm gonna have you stop and seam up and do that same thing we did on the right front to the left front. Um, and this way, this just allows us when we're seaming up this part to kind of correct any gaps we might have. The last thing you wanna do is seam all this up and realize you have like five rows that don't line up. So let's start seaming up the right side, I'm sorry, the left front the same way we did the right front, and we will stop where that left front meets the shoulder here, okay? 
So I will see you back here once we've seen this, this part up and we will just have this top left to seam. I've got a lot of extra strands from where I've joined work previously, but let's do that because I think that'll make for a neater seam all together and it's a little easier to do. So I'm gonna start on the left front and work this seam just as I did the right seam. And I just wanna show you what it's looking like. Um, you can see that, you know, it's in like the stitching is invisible, but you'll just see because this is folded over and double the work, you'll have a little bit of a line there. Okay, guys, I have finished seaming up the left front and I have stopped where the left front meets that left sleeve. So now everything should line up um, so that basically we just need to seam up um, everything that touches the top collar here. Okay, so just make sure as you go that like the middle part is lining up. So I think this is a little bit easier when we work from the left front and the right front up and then we can just um, seam up this part now. Okay, so I have probably enough from this side. So I am just going to thread my tapestry needle with the yarn I have left from my right side. And so basically now you can weave these ends later, weave these ends in later, but I'm going to work and just go through that same two bars on this side. Let me just see where I came up here. I'm going to go through the same two bars on this side. And then I'm just going to start seaming it to where we've got um, this gap here on where this kind of last seam is over here. There's no, like, you can do this kind of uh, there's no exact science to this, right? Like, um, the main thing is just making sure that everything stays lined up and even. Um, you want to make sure, like, this middle part hits this middle part down here. So, work your way across. Again, if you want to, um you know, use stitch marker or scrap yarn to kind of line up the work, that's totally fine. But I'm just gonna work my way across here, trying to keep everything even. And seam it all up. So, when you get to the end, um, I'll meet you kind of when we get to the end here, but just keep working all the way across, lining up the work as you go. All right, so I'll meet you back here when you've finished seaming to all the way over here, okay? All right, I'm about to finish up seaming this. And... Once you get towards the end here, can get a little tight in here, but just make sure you've seamed everything up well and you don't have any gaps. I'm gonna probably just go through this one time here and I'm back to where I finished seaming up that other side, and then we can weave in these ends. So now we have finished seaming the entire shawl collar now. So I do recommend seaming up the shawl collar before you knit the sleeves. So this way, if you are trying the work on as you go, when you have the collar done, it means that the cardigan will just sit 
a little bit better on you and you'll see how um, it sits on you and it'll hit your neck and your shoulder in the correct place. So it's just probably a little bit more accurate um, to then knit the sleeves afterwards. Okay, so I will show you how to knit the sleeves next. One thing I wanted to show you too, um, sometimes, and you can block this and steam this, but sometimes this ribbing kind of tends to bow in a little bit. So one thing I like to do sometimes is just to take, I'm using a 10 millimeter um, crochet hook, and I am going to just do a quick row of slip stitch through this border just to help it kind of straighten out a little bit. And I do it kind of loosely, um, but this just helps it to lay a little bit better. This is all optional, but I'll just show you what this looks like. Um, and it just helps to create a little bit more of a finished look. So just continue all the way up to this last piece and you can go into this section and then cut the work, pull it through, and then we can weave this in on the back side. But this just helps that edge to lay a little bit flatter. So feel free to do that on this side and the other side if you'd like. Okay, so we will start working the sleeves. Now we're gonna complete each sleeve the same way. So I'm just gonna show you how to make one sleeve and then you will do the same thing for the other sleeve. So we first need to put all of our stitches that we put on waist yarn back on scrap yarn. And then we are going to pick up these stitches that we cast on. I cast on four stitches at the underarm, so we need to make sure we pick those up. But first thing is we need to get these stitches off of the waist yarn. So you go ahead and you just pick up all these stitches. You can take off the scrap yarn as you go, or you can wait and do it all at the end, whatever you would like. So just go back and get all of these stitches on, and then I'll show you how to pick up stitches at the underarm. Okay, so I'm nearing the end here of getting all these stitches back on. Just be careful, make sure sometimes this last one gets pulled, so just make sure you pull the string up, um, your yarn up, and get that last piece on there correctly. It can be a little tight. So I usually get, get it all on, push the stitches back onto the wire of the circular needle, and I just pull that through. Okay, so now we've picked up our stitches from the waist yarn, but we need to start knitting the sleeves now. So what we're gonna do is join the piece of yarn on this side of the cast on, and you can see our little notches, one, two, three, four. I'll show you again, because this is how we're gonna pick up the stitches, one, two, three, four. Um, we're gonna pick up those stitches, but we're gonna make sure we put a stitch marker on because after, um, in the middle of the cast on stitches, which will be after two stitches, because we have four cast on stitches, we're gonna place the stitch marker. So that will be the beginning, that will mark the beginning and end of round. Okay, so you're gonna leave a little tail and you're gonna push the stitches to the end of the right needle here and you're gonna insert, if you did a backwards loop cast on at the underarm, you're gonna insert the needle in between those two stitches and pull up the yarn, okay? And the way I pull up the yarn, I wanna show you this again. It can be confusing, so I'm gonna show you how to do it so that the stitches aren't twisted, okay? So you go up and un up and over. You insert the needle, and instead of pulling the yarn over and going through, go under and up, because this way, your loop now is facing the same direction as this loop. So when you knit, you can knit in the same direction and your stitches won't be twisted. So insert your needle in the next cast on and go under 
the needle when you pull it through and now again your stitch your stitches are in the same direction as your other stitches okay so now you put on the stitch marker and we're going to finish picking up those other two stitches go in to that next loop up and go up and under pull that up and this is now the last one and go under and pull that through our stitches are in the right direction um, and now we're simply just going to start knitting in the round you will have a little bit of a gap here um, I will like I like to go back and seam up my work but I'm going to show you how to just knit this round and I'll show you what it looks like when you knit the cast on stitches so we're going to knit um, we are going to knit for a certain length and then re start reducing stitches I'll show you what we're going to do in a minute but let me just show you what it looks like to knit in the round across here and what it looks like to knit those cast on stitches once we get around so I'm just going to work around and I'll show you what it looks like okay so I have knit about an inch and a half and it now it's time to do a re decrease round in the sleeves if you don't want to do a decrease round gradually decrease the sleeves uh don't you know you don't have to this is just to um create a gradual decrease that will then lend itself to um a tighter ribbing at the bottom so if you do change it just note that you might want to figure out how to reduce stitches to have a tighter ribbing if you don't care fine Anyway, so we finished the row, the round, um, for that inch and a half from the cast on. Um, so now we are going to decrease, and this is how to do a decrease round for the arms. I'm going to knit one and then knit two together. Okay, so we have a decrease that's leaning this way. Once we get a knit all the way around and we have three stitches left, we're going to do a slip slip knit. So we'll get a decrease that leans that way, and then we have... Um, one regular knit stitch on either side of the stitch marker okay so I just did a knit two together so knit all the way around all right knit all the way around once you knit all the way around and you've got three stitches left you're gonna do a slip slip knit two together so now you've got a decrease leaning that way and you just continue knitting so we're going to be doing decreases every inch and a half or whatever your pattern says. Um, I think at this point, again, I'm designing on the fly here. I'm going to decrease every inch and a half until I have 24 stitches, but I'll check back in with you or just reference your pattern. But I just wanted to give you an idea of how to um, decrease for the sleeves. All right. I just wanted to show you guys what to do when it's time to start the one by one cuff ribbing. So again, I've reduced um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. So that's 16 stitches. So now I'm ready to do the one by one ribbing for the cuff. And you need to make sure you have an even number of stitches. So the, pearl, the knit one purl one works out as you knit in the round. So I'm just finishing um, this round here and now it's time to start the one by one ribbing and all you're going to do is knit one purl one knit one purl one and you do that all the way around ribbing and now we're just going to bind off but I completed this ribbing for about five inches so this is a lot longer than the body ribbing so um, just reference your pattern so now I'm just gonna bind off for this sleeve so I did um, I'm gonna bind off in the one by one rib so I knit one stitch I'm gonna purl this stitch and again I'm just doing the basic bind off and now I just lift this stitch over the stitch I just knit and drop it. So we just have bound off one stitch and then you continue to work in the one by one rib. So you knit the next stitch and you lift that stitch over, 
purl the next stitch, lift that stitch over, and you just keep doing this. This is in the round because we're doing a sleeve and then we bound off for the body ribbing. We were doing that flat because the cardigan is worked flat back and forth. So you just continue doing this ribbing and binding off at the same time. And you work it all the way across here. So I will show you what to do when you've got, uh, when you're near the end. All right, so I have one stitch left. That's a purl stitch. I'm going to bind that off. Now I'm just going to cut the yarn and leave a tail because we need to be able to weave this back in and then you simply just pull that through. So we're going to go back and with a tapestry needle at the end and connect this yarn with this yarn and weave it in. So there you go. You've got one sleeve completely finished and I reduced the stitches to 24 inches to 24 stitches for the size that I am working. So just reference your pattern. And remember, I design as I go here. So I don't reference a lot of stitch counts and lengths because um, I write it all out in the pattern later. So you still will have a whole nother sleeve to knit. So um, you just complete this sleeve just like you did the last one. So if you made any adjustments, make sure you make the same ad adjustments so you have the same um, your sleeves are similar. So again, you just take your needle, your 16 inch circular needle or DPNs, and you move all of these stitches back on to the, the needle and you pick up those four stitches at the underarm and then you knit stack a net stitch for an inch and a half and then do the, um, the, the round where you reduce the stitches and then you just continue to reduce the stitches every inch and a half and um, then you do the one by one rib for about five inches and bind off. So I'll show you what everything looks like when this when I finish the sleeve. Okay so I have completed the cardigan and now we've got all of these ends to weave in. So I just wanted to show you how to weave in your ends and let's start with a sleeve um, because I just want to show you how to join um, and weave in the end. So basically you're going to want to thread your tapestry needle with the tail from the yarn from your sleeve and we're going to connect it back to the beginning of the, the round. And then we're going to weave it back through here and pull it together. And now you can weave the yarn through the stitch by going up the work like this. And you can pull the yarn up through the work. I might go a little bit farther up here, a few more stitches, and then you can, I like to kind of stretch the yarn out a little bit, and then you just snip the end. And then you can just kind of pull it and then you've got your sleeve end woven in. I also wanted to show you how to weave in the ends um, around the underarm because you might still have some of these gaps. So you can just take your needle and you should have an end from where you joined the yarn. And I like to seam up the gaps like this. Thread your needle and you can go around the area where you've got your stitches and just kind of weave through the stitches around that hole 
and kind of pull it together. And then what I like to do if I have two holes is just kind of weave this in and get all the way over to the other hole and work around the stitches on the other hole or you can join a new piece if it's not long enough. This is kind of short but I'm going to try to make this work. And then when you've woven around the holes you can weave in the work by following a stitch through and just kind of working through following a stitch all the way around here and then when you've worked the stitch through a little bit I'm just following one strand um, then you can kind of pull the work a little bit and snip the yarn and there you've woven in and seamed up the gaps look at that so you can just repeat that for the other armhole and then anywhere where you have ends you need to weave in you can just um, follow a strand of yarn now you'll 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 have a strand um, around this collar and what's great with this double collar is that you can just kind of weave the yarn in and leave it on the inside of this collar and you'll never see an end stick out. So I'm going to go through a few stitches here and then I'm just going to have the yarn go on the inside of the work. And then I'm going to pull it through but then I'm going to cut it close enough and it'll just stay on the inside of that double collar. So I'll snip that kind of close and then you can just pull it on the inside. So I've woven that in. So just go ahead and finish weaving in your ends and you'll be finished with the sweater. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Come back for more fun patterns and tutorials.